All right, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, good morning and welcome to today's Tuesday Market Outlook webinar. My name is Prakash Vijayanath. I'm a senior analyst here at Options Play. And today I'm going to be giving you my thoughts and analysis on the broader market. So before we get started, just our usual disclaimer, the types of securities, forms, and research tools used in this video are for demonstration purposes only and should not be considered a recommendation by Options Play or a solicitation or an offer to buy or sell any securities. This video is not intended to be used for individual tax, legal, or investment planning advice. Our agenda for today, kicking off as usual with the major indices, we have the S&P 500 now at all-time highs. So we'll take a look at where price could potentially pull back to. Obviously, with price being at all-time highs, it's difficult to dictate how far price could push. You're really looking more at momentum indicators to give you an indication of the pullback. Uh, but for now, we'll take a look at where price could potentially pull back to uh, to give you good buying opportunities in the future. Uh, from there, moving on to fixed income and commodities, we'll take a look at the sector rotational model as well, highlighting which sectors are outperforming and underperforming the broader market. We'll take a look at a few subsectors of interest and ending today's webinar with some bullish and bearish market observations, mostly from the previous week, giving you an update as to how they're currently performing. So for the S&P 500, uh, like I said, all-time high territory, just shy of 485. And, you know, there's potential for price to actually push a little bit higher from here because momentum, the 50 period CCI on the daily time frame, which is a blue histogram, it hasn't quite reached that overbought condition at 200. So I do see some room for uh, a continuation higher, uh, not just because of momentum, but also because of the rotation into technology. So on Friday, we saw there was a big shift uh, back into especially semiconductors within the technology sector, given that there was an upgrade uh, for the profitability forecasts for Q2 2024. So that's a pretty significant upgrade because we've now seen this huge shift, not only back into uh, semiconductors, but into technology as a whole. And because technology has such a high weighting in the NASDAQ and the S&P 500, we are seeing the major indices uh, continue to rally higher, even though the other sectors are not um, really following suit in terms of this rally. So narrowing participation in this rally for the S&P 500, but it's nothing we haven't seen before. I mean, we saw this throughout twenty uh, second half of 2020 and mostly through 2021, especially the first half. So we started to see some similarities there. The other macro um, theme that we need to be considering, of course, is interest rates. Uh, the, the Fed futures are predicting a around a 50% or just under 50% probability of a 25-point cut uh, for the March meeting. And at first glance, you know, that's not a bad um, probability because, uh, you know, obviously cutting interest rates will have a or will provide a tailwind for equities to continue higher. But when you look at the probabilities from at least, let's say, a week ago or 10 days ago, that probability of a 25-point cut was at over 70%. Now, the, the fact that probabilities are declining, that's going to be a negative for equities because equities or markets are forward-looking. They're, they're going to be pricing in um, poten uh, the potential future um, trajectory of interest rate cuts. And they were pricing in a 25 point cut. Now that may not be happening, um, or at least in, in question. And that could potentially act as a headwind over the next few days uh, for equities. But for now, the rotation into semiconductors seems to be up, um, seems to be really the priority here for markets to continue to push higher. In terms of the key levels that I'm looking at, obviously we have the 470-ish area. Uh, that was a strong level of support on the daily time frame, but we have resistance here just below 480, uh, between 480 and 475. So you could potentially see that pullback. If we do see a pullback, we could see a pullback towards that level, which could provide a good buying opportunity. If not, there is a further support here, just shy of 470. Overall, the S&P 500 looking quite bullish. Um, you know, the bullish structure is still remaining strong. There's still a lot of underlying momentum. And, you know, the strategy here for me is to simply buy on these pullbacks because it does look like in the interest rate cutting um, environment, which is what 2024 will always be about, uh, buying on the pullbacks will always um, seem to be doing well. Now, earnings is also something that we must consider 
Uh, we had big bank earnings, somewhat mixed results, uh, maybe slightly on the negative side in terms of forward guidance. However, we do have um, other earnings announcements. Uh, this week, the big name would be Netflix um, and Tesla, the two big names. So we'll see how those uh, earnings announcements impact markets outside of the financial sector. All right, moving on to the NASDAQ 100, we have the QQQ ETF firmly, comfortably at all-time high territory. Now, because the Qs have a much higher concentration of technology and semiconductor stocks, we are seeing outperformance relative to the S&P. But with that outperformance comes momentum approaching that overbought condition, a lot closer to 200 Um the 200 level on the 50 period CCI. So not yet overbought, but very quickly approaching that level. So like the S&P, looking for pullback opportunities. Uh, 415 could be a good could good area for that pullback and could facilitate a good buying opportunity from that area for a push higher. But the NASDAQ 100 with so much rotation into technology is clearly outperforming the S&P 500 in the short term. Okay, small caps, IWM, there seems to be a resurgence here for small caps. Last week, we spoke about the 188 level acting as support, which is because it was a 38.2 FIB level. And that turned out to be the case quite nicely. We saw a nice bounce from that 188 level, a very bullish price action yesterday, opened a good bit higher and breaking above 195. And again, set to open even higher this morning. So a lot of momentum returning to the Russell 2000, returning to small caps. And we actually started to see a little bit of outperformance here relative to the S&P 500, similar to the outperformance that we got towards the end of 2024. So the next key level here for small caps, I mean, we have to consider the 200 level, which is a major resistance level. Um, but I'm really more looking towards the 210 area, which is a 23.6 um level over the next couple of months. Uh, there seems to be a lot of momentum and small caps do tend to uh, perform well, especially well in an interest rate declining environment. So TLT, the treasury bond ETF. Um, first, let's discuss yields. So yields have you know, generally moved lower in the last few months as markets were pricing in a uh, the interest rate cuts for 2024. But in recent weeks, we saw a pop-up higher in yields, and that sent the US dollar higher, but it also sent, sent the uh, bond ETFs uh, lower. Initially, TLT was looking to break above the $100 level. That, that was very short-lived. We saw a strong rejection from that level. Um, pretty steep pullback, you know, looking for some bullish price action at 96. Didn't really get that. But now price seems to be at this area of support at around 94 and showing some bullish price action. It is set to open a little bit lower this morning, but if yields continue lower, we could see that rebound here, but very much dependent on data that comes out, um, such as you know inflation data. We are getting inflation data this Friday, uh, labor data as well, so jobs data, non-farm payrolls, which will be uh, next week, Friday as well. So those will be the, the key um, fundamental catalysts that could drive price uh, or dictate price action in the next couple of weeks. But for now, TLT, even though it has pulled back to an area of support, it hasn't really confirmed this as a strong area of support just yet. And I think we need that fundamental catalyst to really confirm our view. All right, moving on to the US dollar. Uh, yesterday, I was looking at a potential bearish case here for the US dollar. It is still maintaining uh, lower highs, lower lows, as you can see. Um, but price did pop up higher as yields moved higher towards this 103.50 level. And we have 104, which is the next major resistance zone. Now, yesterday's price action, looking at the mul multiple rejections of 103.50, we, we looked at a potential uh, reversal here for the US dollar, assuming yields continue to move lower, which has been the, the um, longer term trend. However, we haven't quite got that this morning. You know, this morning's price action, strong rejection of, uh, of the 103 level indicates that it could be potential for either more consolidation or that move higher towards 104. Uh, when it comes to the US dollar, the fundamentals are very much dictated by interest rate, um, interest rate um, policy. Obviously, in an interest rate cutting environment, the US dollar will naturally decline, but it's also dependent on how uh, where 
the interest rates of the other major currencies or the other major central banks are currently sitting at. So we have the ECB actually having a bit more of a hawkish stance, uh, Bank of Japan, uh, Bank of England as well. Those are the uh, major central banks that you're looking at uh, to get an idea of how how strong the US dollar is um, you know, in relation to those other major currencies. And for now, because they're a bit more, they're not as dovish as the Fed, we could still continue to see that US dollar weakness and only the strength returning once those other major central banks uh, shift to a more dovish stance and we start to see interest rate cuts um, in the future. Now, uh, with dollar actually moving higher, gold has shifted to a more neutral um more, more neutral trend. We can see 186 is acting as horizontal support, and you have a major level of horizontal resistance at 192, 193. Price clearly respecting that, but also forming higher highs in the process as price is getting squeezed towards that level. Um, so right now, shift is neutral, very tricky to trade, very, very choppy price action. In my opinion, the risk reward favors the downside should we get a rally towards that 192 level. Um, rallies towards 192, 193 do provide a good risk reward uh, bearish entry point, targeting the, maybe the 186 horizontal level of support. Ideally, you'd probably be wanting to look at credit spreads in terms of exposure as opposed to debit spreads because the the um, the bigger trend here is still quite neutral and you can see price could potentially start to trade at a range of because of, of this 193, 192 horizontal resistance holding very firm. Okay, oil, uh, not much to discuss here for oil. Um, clearly it needs a fundamental catalyst, which we're still not getting. Multiple weeks, almost two months now of just very choppy, very neutral, very sideways price action. It is happening at an area of support or very close to an area of major support at between 65 and 70, but we're not seeing that bounce up higher. At the same time, we're not exactly getting a big move lower to break below that support level. So I think with, when it comes to oil, you are waiting to see any fundamental catalysts um, and how they, they would have an impact on oil prices. But the one thing to consider is obviously energy companies that have a high exposure to oil prices and that have a high correlation to oil prices. The energy sector um, or the energy companies, uh, oil companies, they are definitely underperforming the broader market during a time where equities are generally rallying, S&P and the NASDAQ at all-time high territory, energy companies are underperforming because of the larger bearish trend and now the more neutral trend. Um, so maybe those are ones to avoid in the, for the near future. Okay, sector rotation. We now only have two sectors in the improving and leading categories and nine in the lagging and weakening categories. But when you look at the leading category and you see the fact that technology is there, with a significant improvement in terms of relative momentum and relative strength against the broader market, it's no surprise to see the major indices at all-time high territories because of the weighting of technology. And this isn't an unusual sight to see technology alone in the leading category when the other sectors seem to be performing quite poorly. Um, we, we saw this again late 2022, early 2021 or most of 2021 really, um, the technology leadership can very much be uh, isolating and because investors are rotating out of these other sectors into the higher growth, higher beta technology sector. We also have in the weakening categories, staples and healthcare and in lagging utilities. So our three defenses sectors performing quite poorly um, sh sh clearly shows the shift in terms of the risk on sentiment um, investors are rotating out of these defensive sectors into the more um, more growth-driven sectors like technology and even like discretionary, not as much of a move as technology, but starting to show an uptick in terms of relative momentum against the broader markets and heading towards the improving category. Energy, as you can see, clear underperformer along with real estate, um, like I said, utilities and materials as well. Uh, moving on to some subsectors of interest, um, taking a look at DRIV, the Autonomous and Electric Vehicle ETF. Uh, last year, we were bullish on the subsector when price was consolidating just below 23.50. We were looking for a breakout to 25, and we actually touched our, our profit zone there, but immediately saw a rejection. 
and price now breaking below some support levels, especially the 23 level. Coming back to retest it today, uh, but this could be, you know, a big uh, move lower here because the the trend in the last few weeks has definitely been bearish. Uh, this bullish price action doesn't really convince me of a rebound. Um, additionally, we do have Tesla's earnings coming out this week. That's going to be a huge, huge mover here for uh, DRIV. We could very well see uh, price continue to decline. Assuming we have, there's a poor earnings report or poor forward guidance from Tesla, we could see price continue to decline towards that 21 area. Uh, another newer idea for today is IBB, the biotechnology ETF. 133, 134, that is a major level that we were looking at right now. We saw a big rally towards the level, a breakout, uh, but price is a little bit overbought. Now we see momentum um, back to these more modest levels, and we see a slight pullback, but also a double rejection of that 134 level intraday. And this is some very nice bullish price action here, and it gives a good risk to reward bullish entry point. Targeting further upside, we have some resistance at 144, the previous swing level, but we also have, you know, 145, um, sorry, uh, not 144, at 140, uh, but we also have 145 as the um, next major level on the weekly time frame. So there is further upside here for biotech, despite the fact that we're seeing the, health, the broader healthcare sector actually weaken. Um, and this just goes to show the risk on sentiment. Uh, the biotechnology subsector is a lot more higher beta, higher growth focus, and that is why it is outperforming the healthcare sector currently. Now, Oracle um, Oracle was a bullish play uh, from a couple of weeks ago, and so far it is performing very well here, very much uh, in line with our thesis of the scapful heading towards that 115 area. So price, oh, momentum, I should say, is still a little, a little bit negative, but clearly improving. So there is still room for a further upside here, in my opinion, to, towards 115 and potentially even 118. So for now, uh, so far, so good. Uh, Lowe's was another bullish play from a couple of weeks ago. We, we saw this pullback here and, you know, we were bullish at around 210, still performing quite well. But as you can see, the last few sessions has been very, very neutral. A lot of choppy uh, uh, consolidation that we've seen here. And for now, it's still, you know, in line with our thesis. If it breaks below 216, that's when you'd probably want to consider closing it for a very small profit. Uh, but I'm going to let this breathe for a bit longer and for, it to con for price to continue higher towards that 228 to 230 uh, level. Uh, Rockwell Automation, ROK. Um, we saw price initially pull back, but it has very quickly recovered towards the end of last week and yesterday as well. I would say, you know, it's still at break even, so there isn't really much to discuss here. We have to wait and see how the next few days of price action um, uh, or where price uh, heads towards the uh, where price heads towards the next few weeks, because we're seeing, you know, that initial pullback getting cancelled out. Um, and hopefully we can see a continuation high here for Rockwell. We do have resistance at 310, but we also have a, a breakout opportunity and the next resistance zone only at around 330. So significant upside potential. Uh, but for now, it just hasn't really moved. So I think a bit more patience is required. And a new idea for today is C Limited. Uh, very strong underperformer against the broader market, uh, really since interest rates started to pick up higher. And as you can see, price is now at this level of major support at 35, but clearly respecting that zone. So it provides a good risk reward entry point targeting, you know, 40, 42. Um, I'm not saying there's going to be a huge, this is a huge capitulation and we're going to see a big move higher, but it provides an opportunity to really play the range here. So if we see a continuation of this rally to even 48, that will give us good uh, bearish entry point as well. So uh, the thesis for this trade would be that the 35 level of support holds, and therefore you're looking for more a credit spread as opposed to a debit spread to take advantage of really the lack of upside momentum while still being uh, neutral to slightly bullish. All right, and with that, that is all I have for you today. Thank you all so much for joining me, and I will see you next week, Tuesday, for another Market Outlook. I hope you all have a great trading week, everyone, and goodbye.